Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to be having a look at the extremely dangerous storm Eunice coming up over the next 24 hours. We have now got a red danger for life warning in force for southwest England and southern Wales. Could be 100 mile per hour gusts and widely elsewhere 70 to 80 mile per hour gusts. The warnings have been adjusted this morning so I'm getting this video out as quickly as possible after those warnings are adjusted so we can get as many people um, are able to see what could be happening over the next 24 hours to get, be prepared really. And this is going to be impa impacting a very large area um, that could be giving some severe impacts, devastating impacts and potentially even some casualties with this as well. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow me as well, the link's in the description. Now, Storm Dudley moved through yesterday, and we did see some severe impacts with that. Power outages um, for some areas, road closures, flights were disrupted, especially in Scotland. I think they were cancelled. Um, most of the flights yesterday were cancelled. Um, and we, of course, saw quite extreme impacts from that. And that's what we really should be talking about, the impacts from that 70, 80 mile per hour gusts from that storm across northern England and southern Scotland. But I suspect that was just the starter to the main course that is coming tomorrow in Storm Eunice, which is going to be um, potentially a historic storm in terms of its wind strength and uh, severity and its widespread nature. Um, so if we do have a look at the latest weather warnings, you can see most of England and Wales is under amber warning for wind. Now that wind warning was put in yesterday and we had a look at that and I did say I suspected we could be seeing a red warning put in force and as of about 20 minutes before I recorded this video, we're now seeing a red warning across southwest England and southern Wales and potentially it could spread. We could see a larger red warning put in force which would be truly exceptional if we saw something like that further inland. The snow warning further northwards has been adjusted pushed a bit further northwards as the storm track is slightly further northwards um, than anticipated a day or two ago. So meaning snow is going to primarily be across the far north of England, over high ground and across Scotland. Could be some severe disruption from that as well. But I'm expecting again over higher ground, maybe 10 to 15 centimetres. And this would be like a big event we'd be talking about if this was um, just a snow event. Um, but instead, the main impacts are going to be the, those wind speeds. Now, if we do first have a look at the danger for life uh, red warning Storm Eunice or Storm Eunice. I don't really know how to pronounce it, if I'm being totally honest. Um, sometimes I'm a little bit frustrated with some of these Met Office uh, storm names that we get, um, as they are a little bit uh, ambiguous sometimes with the way they are pronounced. But I'm just going to go by Storm Eunice. That's how I've been saying over the last few videos. Could cause significant disruption and dangerous conditions due to extremely strong winds on Friday. What to expect? Flying debris um, resulting in danger to life. Damage to buildings and homes with roofs blown off and power lines brought down. Uprooted trees are likely. Roads, bridges and railways lines closed with delays and cancellations to bus, train, ferry services and flights. Power cuts affecting other services such as mobile phone coverage. Large waves and beach material being thrown onto coastal roads, seafronts and homes including flooding of some coastal properties. Now if you are in this red warning I advise you to stay at home um, over the next um, sort of 24 to 36 hours. Be prepared, have some food stocks. These winds are not going to be coming in until sort of later, much later this evening. If we double look at the time, so you can see much later this evening, the uh, amber warning will start to pick up and the red warning is tomorrow morning to lunchtime. Five hour red warning. So tomorrow morning, do not expect to be doing anything. Please stay at home. Um, go out today, get some supplies to last until tomorrow evening or perhaps Saturday um, as it's impossible to know what could be happening with this. I pray that it is overhyped, that the models are wrong, that it's 10, 15, 20 miles per hour less than what we're seeing. But I'm scared that this, if this does come um, to fruition, we could be seeing some very um, devastating impacts from this. Now, if we do go down to the further details, you can see extremely strong west to southwesterly winds will develop over the southwest England and South Wales early on Friday. Widespread inland gusts of 70 to 80 miles per hour. That is exceptional. Normally with the name Storm, we see 70 to 80 miles per hour on the coast and maybe 50 or 60 miles per hour inland, which is pretty severe. Now, remember, 70 miles per hour 
is or sustained winds of 70 miles per hour is hurricane category one strength winds now we're seeing only gusts of 70 80 to 90 miles per hour but i do suspect especially in that red warning across the coast we could be seeing sustained winds at times of 70 miles per hour that is hurricane strength winds so just just that give you a comparison of some of the videos we may have seen in the summer online over in america or the caribbean or elsewhere around the world of hurricanes that could be the scale not saying it's guaranteed but that could be the scale um and we can see 90 miles per hour near some coast with dangerous conditions on beaches and seafronts winds are expected to ease from the west during the late morning very likely and very high impact now if we have a look at the amber warning zone it's from 5 a.m tomorrow until 9 p.m tomorrow evening so even as the red warning ends at lunchtime still an eight or nine hour gap for amber wind warnings which can still be extremely severe not only um the wind's strong but as a result of previous previous winds from storm dudley or from winds earlier in the day with uh, trees structures power lines can be already damaged maybe not fallen maybe not causing disruption but even a smaller wind gust could break the camel's back and bring it down so please do stay vigilant out there even if you are not in the red warning zone amber warning is plenty uh, plentiful to give significant disruption so again similar to the red warning but just less likely if we have a look down uh, you see it's updated start line delayed by two hours along with updated forecast details again 60 to 70 miles per hour range but up to 80 miles per hour in a few zones across coast of west wales and southwest england gusts of 80 to 90 miles per hour are possible that's where the red warnings and you can see extremely high impact and just less likely so the red warning is not because it's actually got higher impacts but because it's more likely to have those higher impacts that amber warning zone widely within this we could still see 80 90 mile per hour gusts just there is less certainty with that um it's much more likely to be along the coast of southwest england now i do suspect it's this central swathe of, of wales england is the london area and across of course across the south coast that's where we're going to be seeing the strongest winds across northwest england northeast england you're still going to see some stronger winds but as we'll see with the models in a minute i don't suspect that's where we're going to see the bullseye uh, as they say in terms of the strongest wind speeds maybe 60 or 70 miles per hour there not the 80 or 90 miles per hour we could see elsewhere so significant conditions from this storm extremely dangerous and of course if you are in this amber and red zone please do take the necessary precautions if you must go out tomorrow please do make um like uh, make sure we, people know where you are uh, and don't take any uh, significant risk and of course if you are in the fortunate position of being able to just stay at home i advise you um to do that um, and don't do any unnecessary travel now if we do look further northwards we do have a snow warning for stormy nice from 3 a.m tomorrow until 6 p.m um, and you can see the warning has been shifted further northwards as the uh, impact area has been pushed further northwards again Five centimetres at low lowing areas away from coast. Accumulation expected to be significant, uh, significantly higher over hills, with 10 centimetres, possibly 20 centimetres above 300 to 400 metres. Strong winds occurring at the same time could, could cause blizzards and conditions. Again, low likelihood, higher impact, as of course, it all depends on how the air mixes. Um, uh, it's not likely to be a massive um, sort of persistent snow event. It's likely this snow will melt, of course, in a couple of days as we have had massively cold conditions recently but cold air interacting with the low is going to mean snow could be falling at least for a period of time during friday uh, and friday evenings like to be pretty cold as well pretty widely in terms of temperatures falling so you can see the significant impacts here please do take care uh, most of the british isles um is in a warning um it, or at least the united kingdom is within a yellow or amber or red warning so please do stay vigilant out there and as i said if you are in the fortunate position to be able to stay indoors stay inside for most of the day please do take that option now if we do have a look at the met office twitter page just have a look what they're saying now you can see this is the latest red warning zone and you can see again the peak wind gusts from 7 to 12 o'clock um, and this has been updated only 20 minutes ago. You can see that across South Wales, South West England, right along the coast, 90 miles per hour, even 100 miles per hour perhaps. And you can see Storm Dudley, we got official wind speeds um, of gusts around 70 to 80 miles per hour in a few spots. Again, it's difficult to say exactly how accurate these are. 
these are official wind gusts could be higher in a few locations that don't have weather stations um so these are just the general gist of wind gusts um so we could have seen 85 90 mile per hour in a few spots but widely 60 to 70 miles per hour was sort of the sweet spot um for this storm uh, and it's likely to be 10 or 20 miles per hour faster for storm Eunice. so if we now have a look at the latest weather models but we'll first have a look of course at the radar see what is going on with this uh, if we just briefly update it you can see at the moment nothing too substantial is actually going on with the live radar if we just get it to update, oh, it's running a little bit slowly this morning. You can see we've got a lot of showers around and snow is starting to fall across Scotland as colder air is digging in. But Stormy Nice is down in the mid-Atlantic as we speak out here and it is spreading towards us. And we just got a few showers around in the west that should be pushing eastwards over the course of this evening. And we do have snow showers in the north. They should ease for a time across this evening before the wind and rain arrives tomorrow. Now, we haven't talked about rain yet in this video, but the bullseye for rain is likely to be sort of in between the wind warning and the snow warning. In northern England, southern Scotland, where we don't see the snow it will be falling as very heavy rain. So also do keep precautions for that. We haven't had a massively wet period recently, so I'm not expecting massive flooding, but there could be some surface water flooding and a few areas could see some disruption from overflowing rivers, etc. Now, if we do have a look at the latest from the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation temperature um, and wind speeds, of course. Now you can see showers, of course, this afternoon, then we see a bit of a lull over the course of the evening before weather fronts arrive in the southwest by early hours and you can see the heaviest rain is across northern england you can see all those yellows across northern england and snow heavy snow across scotland um northern england and ireland northern ireland as well you can see there mainly in land and over higher ground but not exclusively some fall into low-lying areas as well and you can see those peak wind speeds are actually going to be when sort of the rain is cleared um under the sudden edge of the low you can see a squally feature the occluded front around the center of the low as it moves through that could provide some extremely strong winds squally rain and that could be giving some severe conditions as that moves through and you can see that enhanced precipitation moves eastwards across the day and we just continue to see snow falling in the north before things start to ease up across the evening we see another bout of precipitation maybe some snow even over the higher ground moving through saturday evening and that could provide again some more significant conditions and again just lots of precipitation and rainfall moving in general could be some snow with that before things slowly start to ease away now if you have a look at the wind gusts have a look at storm Eunice, how severe it's going to get and you can see through the southwest as we get towards the red warning zone by tomorrow um Sunrise, we're going to be seeing temperatures, uh, not temperatures, wind gusts around 80 to 90 miles per hour. Severe wind gusts could be even get up to 100 miles per hour across some coastal areas of Southern Ireland, Southwest Wales, down into Southwest England as well, before those wind gusts come inland. Severe disruption from this, and it's all because it's going into more populated areas. Now, some people may argue that we've seen a red warning so far this winter. We've seen uh, loads of amber warnings as well, but it's because this is across more widespread areas hitting more populated areas um now it's not meaning london or south england is more of a priority than elsewhere but this storm could be infecting infecting uh, affecting tens of millions of people whereas storm arwen uh, across north in northeast england and eastern scotland was only affecting a few million people um and these Differences can make um, can, uh, can make can make massive disruption um, because uh, so much power lines can go down. More people could be without power. Roads could be disrupted. Massive motorways could be closed, um, and it could just affect generally more people. Um, and that's why this storm could be uh, even more devastating. Uh, one of the most devastating storms we've seen in many years. It could be on the level of the Great Storm of 1987. Um, we're gonna have to just see really um, what happens with that tomorrow now beyond that those wind gusts eventually do start to die down across the afternoon and stay very strong across east anglia and northeast england through middle of afternoon before things start to die down to 50 60 mile per hour gusts and then eventually things start to drop away and don't look too bad before we saw more uh, wind and um rain move in and there's quite a big area of strong winds there through early hours of monday could be an, another name storm with that winds do die away so it is showing that the low pressure is filling up um i.e decreasing in strength but i'm not 100 percent sure what we'll see with that we'll have to keep an eye on that over the course of the next 24 to 36 hours and if we do have a look at max temperatures as well actually 
So that is showing today. We'll just go through these quite quickly because, of course, the wind gusts are the main thing we were looking at today. You can see today, 7, 8, 9 degrees in the south, much colder in the north. Coast course this evening, quite chilly, but we see big, big temperature contrast by tomorrow. after uh, Sunrise, sort of 10, 11 degrees, freezing further northwards. But by the afternoon, all areas are much colder. Freezing in the north, only 5 to 7 degrees in the south. Pretty chilly indeed with the rain. Big wind chill around with that rain as well. Uh, rain and wind. Over the course of Friday evening, all areas are going to drop down pretty chilly to around freezing or low single digits for Saturday afternoon temperatures. Still quite cold around freezing or maybe uh, some areas only getting up to around 5, or six, five 6, 7 degrees. Very cold indeed. And for early hours of Sunday, temperatures colder again. For temperatures, a lot of up and down over the next few days. Now, if we do have a look at the Icon Run briefly, just have a look at precipitation and wind gusts as well. We can see again... Heavy precipitation moving through, snow over higher ground for eventually does pull away and clear. More precipitation, a bit further northwards with the snow through Saturday. Again, we'll have a look at that in more detail tomorrow once uh, the main impact from Stormy Nisa are moving through. Um, and then again, a lot of bouts of precipitation, wintriness as well, pushing through, keeping things very unsettled. If we look at snow depth as well, you can see... 5 to 10 centimetres potentially over higher ground, but I'm not expecting anything too major to low-lying areas. But of course, could be wrong. These things are very, very marginal. It's a very marginal snow event for low-lying areas. Uh, but as the warning said, could be 5 centimetres in some places. If we do have a look at the wind gust, though, the most severe impacts, you can see widely 70, 80, if not 90 miles per hour, perhaps even quite far inland. In the London area, 60 to 70, maybe 80 miles per hour. Um, very severe wind gusts. Uh, and again, could be an historic storm this eventually those wind speeds do subside over the course of the evening but still 50 60 maybe 70 miles per hour into the evening for overnight temperature uh, wind speeds do drop away and then another low pressure system as I said there with the wind and precipitation moving through on saturday and um, that could cause some disruption with um, power lines down trees down it's already a bit of weakening within the infrastructure or significant weakening of the infrastructure this could bring down more disruption for eventually things to slowly die away but by monday we see that another big low pressure system as i said it is filling in but still 70 80 miles per hour gusts on here on this so it could be another severe system now if we do finally have a look at the mogreps uh which uh sort of posted champs showing what we could be seeing in terms of wind gusts now if you can see here uh i've snap uh, got a snapshot at midday on friday and you can see all of these runs are showing 70 80 plus mile per hour wind gusts um in and around um, in and around uh, Friday lunchtime. So this just shows you all models are going for it. Uh, slightly deviate, slightly little deviations in exact location of the strongest winds. Um, that red warning zone does look like it's going to be the bullseye, but elsewhere there could still be very strong winds. And of course, uh, timing maybe slightly altered by an hour or two, and maybe there could be maybe five or ten mile per hour deviation on wind speeds. So hopefully these models are wrong. Uh, this is one time where I do want our forecasts and our models to be wrong in terms of the wind gusts. Uh, hopefully it's only 60, 70 miles per hour instead of 80, 90, 100 miles per hour, which is being seen on some of these models. But we'll have to see exactly what happens. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please do stay safe up there and look after yourself over the next um, 24 to 48 hours. If you are in the red zone and the amber zone, if you are in a fortunate situation to be able to stay at home, please um, please do limit your time outdoors. Don't make any unnecessary car journeys. Um, and please do stay out of those sort of peak wind gusts. As I said, southwest is 7, 8, 9 a.m. until midday. Further eastwards, those wind gusts could stay uh, very, very high. Dangerous levels all the way to around 6, 7 p.m. in the evening. So please do take care out there and stay safe. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.